Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. You guys remember this thing? Well, it's just about done. Well, it is done. We've been driving around. It's great. It's fantastic. It looks awesome. We got the bed liner in it. Everything's buttoned up. Um, today, as the title suggests, we're going to be retrofitting steering in this. Well, we're going to be retrofitting steering in something. Uh, not this one today. Um, so we took this steering gear box. They had it rebuilt over at uh, Redhead Steering Gears. And it works great. Uh, as a you know once in a while driver um, but the steering is still rather stiff as a daily and it requires a little bit of work plus we got the sweet jewel of a steering wheel that's a little bit smaller so today we're going to retrofit in a electric steering gear in another truck that is very similar to this that does not have an engine in it so it's really easy to get in and manipulate uh, and if that works well, we'll put one in this one as well. So um, let's get over to the bench and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of time to explain, but every part of this is important if you want to do this uh, the right way. So what we're looking at here, this is a uh, electric power steering motor out of a Toyota Prius that was found at a wrecking yard. You can see it's a Toyota General part. It's just made by a Denso electric motor. And so with this, what you're going to do is you're going to cut it out of the car. This is the bracketry that comes out of the um, passenger compartment, and this is the electronic controller here. So what you do is we've already have one here to sit in that we've blown apart what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to knock off the bracketry you see these little dimples right here you can just knock that off and then that slides out and then what you're left with at that point is this sort of spline shaft here and then this piece here that we cut off which is this piece here so you're going to cut that off and we're going to use this adapter as sort of an adjustment spline for when we're installing it into the truck onto this so this what we're looking at here is the gearbox out of one of the trucks so this truck here that we're, we're going to mock up that's that gearbox and then we're going to cut the shaft where we need to measure cut put the spline on it from the toyota prius uh, part and then mock it up into it. then this here is the other end of it you're going to pull the u-joint off and then they make a spline to three quarter um slip that we're going to put on here it's a pretty tight fit but it works well it's got a, a allen key jam nut and that end will go onto the shaft over there so i know i just said a mouthful this is a lot um but it's important that i go through this process so now back to the controller really quick this controller here you need for in order for this to work so you've got battery power here these two big fat cables and then you've got switch power here now um you don't need to hook anything else up and this defaults to 43 miles an hour. So the point of this, yeah, the point of this, this setup here is to the faster you go, the less power assist you need. And then the slower you go, the more power assist you need. Uh, it'll default to 40 and it'll stay that way. Now, what you can do is there's a company in Portugal that makes this unit here. This is a GPS unit and it has the exact same plug that goes into the control box, as you see there. Um, this company is www.brunosteering.com and they make this GPS unit specifically for this uh, for this gearbox $99. and it's about 99 bucks so you've got the extra so this system how much was this out of the wrecking yard $18 oh yeah so this this adapter is $18 you'll need that I'll link to the description I forgot where that's exactly from but I'll link in the description where you can get that I'll link in the description that website for that part and $35 then, and then the $35 out of the wrecking yard, you got a steering gear box. So I know this is, it's a lot of pieces, a lot of there's, but they don't make a drop in bolt in unit for the application we're doing. So we're trying to piece together. So, um, stick with us and we'll slowly put these pieces in and you'll see in the end what it looks like. Let me show you on the truck exactly where we're putting it. Mounting the motor here to the gearbox is not going to work. There's not enough space. It's too close to the gearbox. So what we decided to do after much deliberation uh, is take and mount the gear, electric gear at this point right here. This is probably the least aesthetically pleasing, but the most practical. And what I mean by that is that it's out of the way of everything. I know it looks funky with the motor sticking out but we've got clearance from the pedals we don't have to cut any of the firewall away right here 
we don't lose any structure and we already have a bracket mounted here that we can we can use so what we're gonna have to do that's our tube for the steering right here we're gonna cut the tube then we're going to mount the tube in we have a bushing we had bushings machined for that part right there it's hard to tell I wish I had a third hand but that's where it's gonna sit ultimately bottom line is we're gonna we're gonna put it there and then we're gonna put a bracket right there for that bolt set coming off of this already existing bracket and that's where it's going to get its uh rigidity from to keep this thing from twisting like that when we uh when we steer so <laughs> so it's important that you understand that on this motor when you pull this bracket off that comes with the vehicle that that space that that bracket provides is enough gap to keep that bolt from hitting the gear inside here. So if you pull this bracket off and put that bolt back in, that bolt will hit a gear preventing this from turning. So you're gonna have to put a spacer or a washer or something in there or another bracket uh, when you do that. It's very important that you understand that that bolt will touch the gear in there. All right, so we've got our, our series of progression here. <clears throat> we've got the motor right out of the wrecking yard, right out of the car. We've got the old gearbox and shaft before we cut it and this is the exploded view of what we did so from a good measurement here so what we did is we cut here from the shaft from the from the gearbox to the end of the shaft it's 13 and a quarter okay that's that's the length you need to cut then you put your coupler on it we're going to weld there then the gearbox goes on We'll, we'll pound that in, that's fine. Then this is the shaft that we cut out of here, and we'll show you guys how to do that. Slide, slide that on there, bottom it out, all the way down, and then the measurement for this part of the shaft is you cut down and it is, what's that, eight and, eight and three quarter? You have a little bit of play with the spline shaft here, so you ain't gotta be right exactly on the money, but as close as you can get, you can see that slide back and forth. So that is all of it fully assembled before we mount it into the truck. And then once we mount it into the truck, ignore this, we're gonna put, we have another tube right here we're gonna cut. That'll come all the way out to just before the steering wheel. Um, and then once you mount it in the truck, it's a matter of wiring it in the, in the electronics and then testing it out. So that's kind of where we're at now. We're going to do a quick video on how to disassemble the unit out of the uh, car right now. All right, there's a disassembly of the gearbox assembly right out of the car. Okay, so one more part of this puzzle is covering this up with the tube, the steering column tube that sits in here like this. So what we want to do is take that rubber bushing, you slide the rubber bushing on right here, the tube goes kind of inside that bushing a little bit. Then we had a guy make and machine these bushings to hold the ends of the tube. So we've got one already on this side, you can see that there. And he machined it perfectly. You gotta pound them on a little bit, but they fit great. You're gonna set that all the way up against there, and we're gonna measure that distance from there to there. And then that way when we cut the tube, this fits right on here and it's covered inside of the inside of the truck. That's where you might want to tell him not to put the bolt back in. Yeah. So we're taking the bolts out for this bracket here that is required for the OEM installation. We are not putting the bolts back into this bracket. They're not necessary. So our mock-up here that we've already done, we don't need it. The tube's gonna go right here. If we use any bolts, it'll be these two. But we also, remember, just remember, not too long. They don't wanna go into that gear. And that's pretty much it. Once we get that bracket off, this good motor is ready to be mocked up and we're gonna just basically put this motor in place of that one. And then we're gonna weld here and we're gonna weld the, sh the other shaft into here and then we're gonna bolt it back into the truck. Okay, we got a big mess here, a big mock-up, but we got a battery. We got uh, power and ground hooked up to the controller box right here. And then the steering's all mocked up, everything's bolted in place. We've got our, our bracket holding there. We got our gearbox in and everything. We, everything is kind of in place to making sure we test. So we got this wire here, this is our activator right here, right? And then we've got our switched power. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
hooked up the switch power with this alligator clip and you guys are going to hear the click on this box. Hear the clip? Off? On? There, hit the click. I don't know if you can hear it in the camera, but there's a click. And then now I can just sit here with my hand and turn this and it, it goes like, like butter. No problem. Effortless. I can do it with one finger. You can see I'm turning the wheel like money. No, oh, dude, it's just, it's so easy. Done. So now we, uh, now we can put it in the good truck, uh, the nice truck. And now we know what all our measurements are. And now we know how it's all wired and if we can mock it up and, and put it in there permanently. But that's it. That's, that's the full setup right there. So you want to take, this is your switch power. Is this wire coming out of here? And then we're going to use these other wires for the GPS unit. So this is your switch, this is your power, and then these two go plug right into the harness. And it's easy. Feel that, Eric. Feel that. Feel how easy that is. Okay, take it off. <laughs> well, you guys hopped out. There's no weight on it now, no too. Way. That's hard there. Okay. Yeah, that's stiff. Now you put it back on. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's bringing his seat. Oh, so you I'm going to tow you around the neighborhood. Okay. There. It takes a while for the torque. Yeah, for the torque sensor to click in. Yeah. So here's the other deal. Um, we'll get to speed. Yeah. And then we can see that that motor doesn't move. That that bracket's adequate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That shouldn't be a problem. Though. If it's not doing no. it here, it's not going to do it down the road. Yeah. All right. Painted gearboxes for various builds we're doing. Those look pretty good. Okay, so here's the update what we got going on. We got we're mounting up one of these gear these uh, control boxes in the dash right now. So we're leaving that bracket on right there, and that bolt or that shiny bolt right there is where that's mounted inside the dash. And we're running power right now through the hole. And here, want to hold that for me? We're gonna run power through here, and we've got a circuit breaker mounted, 60 amp breaker mounted right here, and that's running to power. That's where this wire's going. And then the other wire on the on the box is ground, and then we're going to ground it inside the dash. Uh, so that's all mounted. The wiring electrical controls are all mounted inside there. What we've already done is we pulled the gearbox out. We've cut the shaft to length and mounted that little spline adapter on it. So that's remounted, and that's good to go. Then we took the other half of the shaft that we measured out uh, eight and three quarters, and we mounted that spline shaft on it. So this will go onto the steering gearbox inside and then that is where we mount the steering wheel to. So that's where we're at with this one. We're gonna finish up the wiring here. The only thing that we are waiting for is we have we have bushings coming for this thing. Uh, I think I've showed you guys previously that these we have these custom bushings being made, machined um, specifically for this. So not and exactly a necessity to finish the job but it is nice to have to retain these tubes so when you cut the tube that covers the steering shaft it, it, these bushings make it to where it doesn't rattle around um the originally the steering comes with a rubber grommet and i think i showed you those that already um that will work temporarily if you guys want to do that but having somebody machine just out of a piece of aluminum um, is a really nice touch Okay, so semi-finished product here. I'm gonna go through this as step-by-step step as possible. So where we left off, we had the gearbox put in. And what you're looking at here, this is the original tube for the steering column. And then what this is, is just a rubber cover to cover what used to be a three on the tree, which is now a four speed. So this is a mission band rubber cover that we're using. So uh, you can cover it with whatever you want, but that's just what we used. So tube's back on it. We cut the tube to length based upon where the motor, the electric motor from the Prius is sitting in the steering column. So basically you're going to cut that tube, you're going to put the motor in place of it, and then the tube on top. So what you're looking at, essentially this motor is is sitting in there like this, oh excuse me, like that. So here's the, here's the motor sitting on an angle, facing up, that's out of the way of everything. You've got a 90 degree an angle iron, excuse me, not angle iron, just a 90 degree, what's that, eighth inch steel? Yeah. And a bolt that you have to drill in here for support and then a bolt that goes into the motor. I think I've covered that part once already, which gives you enough space for your pet foot to go on the brake pedal there. 
then what you have to do is you got to drill a hole into the side of the column here because now you still got to run your wires up for your um, turn signal and your horn. That's the original spot where the wire came out. Yeah, right here's the original spot where the wire came out. What you're looking at here is those uh, aluminum bushings we had custom made to hold this tube in place. That's more just for um, retention so the tube doesn't wobble. You can use the original rubber grommets, um, but we just went the extra mile and, and had the rubber made. grommets used on the on the on the gearbox. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think that, lower I end. showed that on there. I yep. think. And then so you drill a hole here, and then there's a channel that goes in here. So when you drill that hole, you have to be real careful you don't damage that channel so the wire can go through. We've got this twine in here to pull the wire through when we're ready for that. Then at the top here, you've got this piece here. So this from here that way was the original part of the Prius that we cut off because we wanted those splines right there to go on to the column. So basically this is going to sit inside the column like that and what you're looking at is basically this going in there. And so we cut off this tube here because this was getting in the way of the wires. So you can cut that tube around there to give you some extra space. So when it's all said and done, you put this sleeve in here with that with the splines facing down, but you have to weld the rest of your shaft in here. I think we've already shown that. Slide that all the way down there. And then you can put your steering wheel on. Obviously, this is not this is an old steering wheel. Um, but that's it right there, and that's the finished product. So we've already got the key on and we've got all the wires and stuff hooked up, and it works really, really, really well. And it's quiet as a mouse. You don't hear any motor whine or anything like that. It works fantastic so we're gonna button this up put the seat in here and we're gonna take it for a quick spin okay got it fired up right off the bat you may not have any power steering but once that gearbox and the computer sense a little bit of torque on the steering wheel then it then it's free to go uh, what I did, didn't mention yet is on the top here you see that little piece that's your GPS signal like we showed you before the GPS plugs into that control box underneath the dash and you can mount that anywhere you want on the dash on the roof if you got enough wire uh, so yeah go for a quick ride also remember those splines holding the steering wheel in we don't have a retainer or lock in it it's probably not the safest so remember when you're uh, driving that that can slide out unless you develop some sort of a, a lock pin to hold those splines in place so you know it couldn't get past your body yeah Life on the edge, right? So much better, huh? It's like driving a modern car now. Yeah. That's it. Easy peasy. Well, there's more to it than a, <laughs> it's not exactly easy peasy, I guess, but it doesn't really do that far. It works works really nice. No more no more struggling and hoofing it like you're trying to drive a deuce and a half. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Returns to center. No gearbox wine. Okay, well that's it. That's a uh, uh, electric power steering in a uh, old 60s pickup. Worked pretty well. So um, if you guys like what I do on this channel, please consider subscribing and also hit that like button.